Hi everybody, happy Monday. Um, I hope you have had a good start to your week. Uh, I know today was a really, really exciting day for most of us in North America, I think worldwide, but most of us in North America. Uh, we not only had the new moon in Aries, which we have every year, um, and a solar eclipse, which we have once in a while, but we had a full solar eclipse that was visible in most of North America and it actually uh, creates an opportunity for us to look inwards because uh, if you know what the symbology of a eclipse is in terms of astrology what is happening is that our moon which is our emotional state and our subconscious mind is casting a shadow on the Sun which is our conscious mind and the way that we express ourselves and the way that people experience us. So, uh, and over the weekend, uh, we had the moon traveling through the sign of Pisces, which is mutable water. Um, moon, the moon controls our emotions. So our emotions over the weekend from, um, I wanna say Friday night uh, into Monday morning, or Saturday night rather, into um, Monday morning have been very, very turbulent. I don't know if you have seen this, I don't know if you've felt this, but everywhere around me there has been a lot of turbulent emotions and things changing and relationships changing and all of that. So given that the new moon is a time for setting new intentions and starting a new course, uh, the new moon in Aries is put even more significantly about that because Aries is the sign that starts the zodiacal calendar uh, and it is about that cardinal fire that first initiative that new beginning really the new beginning and the start of us germinating with the um, with the new Aries season so uh, I didn't want to have this session before the end of the eclipse because during the eclipse season it is a time of introspection it is a time for us to go inwards and to really take account of what is happening with us internally it really isn't a time to manifest anything it is really a time for introspection and reflection and all of that so I didn't want to have this neurographic vision board session while we were still in the eclipse season, which is why you didn't see me last um, week and the couple of weeks before that. So I, so I apologize for the absence, but here we are now. The eclipse is behind us. The moon has just turned new in the sign of Aries. And we are really being invited after a potentially emotionally turbulent weekend to start looking forward to what is coming in the new year and thereafter. So what I wanted to do today with you is to do a vision board, which I do every quarter, right? So on the um, important dates on the calendar, on the spring um, solstice, uh, equinox, the summer solstice, the autumn equinox, and then the winter solstice. So we have done the winter one. You, it's up there if you want to see it. Uh, and today we're going to do the one for spring. And this is going to be uh, an opportunity for us to set intentions in eight different categories in our life, in eight different sections. And it's also a gratitude practice all at the same time. So we are setting intentions, but first we're giving thanks in every one of these eight things that we're doing. So I will tell you what seven of these are and I'm going to want you to pick the eighth. The eighth is going to be your personal project. So what is the dream? What is the goal for this upcoming year? Right? What is it that you are specifically looking to manifest? It can be um, a new job. It can be your own business, it can be a health journey, it can be a fitness journey, it can be a improvement of your relationship journey, getting into it, it is up to you. But this one needs to be specific, right? So we are looking for your intention and your personal project as the eighth aspect of what we're going to be working on today, okay? So seven out of eight, I'm going to tell you, and the eighth one you're going to choose for yourself. 
So, I'm gonna, if you, if something pops up in your mind immediately, great. Sorry, I'm getting all kinds of <laughs> things on my computer. I'm getting notifications that shouldn't be there, but give me a second and we'll get rid of them. So, I want you to uh, choose your personal project. And then I'm going to tell you what the other sections are that we're going to be working on together. But before we do that, this specific um, time, I'm actually going to use, because all division boards are very similar in the way that we do them, but sometimes I use what is called a manifestation spiral. So in neurographic art, we have four main pieces of geometry. We have the circle, the square, the triangle, and then the spiral. And I will explain to you what a manifestation spiral is. A spiral is essentially a circle, right? But given that in space-time, we are never in the same location twice, even though, for example, the orbit of our sun around, our earth around the sun seems circular, the sun itself is moving in time space, right? Time and space. So what is actually happening is that we are creating a spiral, right? As we re revolve around the sun and the sun is moving, we are in a spiral pattern. So even though the earth starts spring with the beginning of the spring equinox every year, we are never in the same place twice, okay? so. That is the main difference between a circle and a spiral. A circle is encompassing, a spiral gives off or invites energy, depending on how you draw it. Now, visually speaking, they look identical. Uh, what th the difference is, is that you can use a spiral for two different reasons. You can use it to emanate your energy and put it out into the universe or you can use it as a funnel to gather the energy that is available to you in your environment from the universe and internalize that. So what we're going to do today, a manifestation spiral, is when we are putting our energy, we're echoing it out into the world. And the way that that works is that when you start the spiral, you start from the center and you go outwards. Okay. When we draw our spiral, which is the first thing we're going to draw, you want to make sure that you end your spiral on an upward trajectory. Okay, So we don't want to bring the spiral down and have it disappear on our paper. So before you actually commit pen to paper, try a couple of times with your hand on the paper and make sure that you're going to end on an upward trajectory. If we are using a spiral in our work, to gather the energies of the universe and focus it directly onto ourselves, right? That's a support spiral. In that case, you start from the outside and come in. Visually speaking, when you're looking at your work or when somebody else who doesn't know what you've done is looking at that, they can't tell which one it is. But because this is the kind of art where we set intention, you will always know, your subconscious will always know if this is an outward spiral or an inward spiral. And in fact, in the same algorithm, we're going to use both, right? So in the same composition, we're going to use outward spiral as the main focus. And then as we go through different sections, we're actually going to use inward spirals to gain more support, to gain more energy behind the intentions that we're about to set for the future, okay? I hope everything is clear. I am just going to switch cameras so you can see my paper. Okay, great. So. Just give me one second, I have a document that I want to open which was open but somehow it got closed so give me one quick second okay 
So the first thing I want you to do for this session, you're going to need two different sizes of um, pens or markers. You can use uh, the fine tip, so a chisel tip one, which is what we're going to start with. And then you can either use a fine tip, which if you're a beginner, I suggest if you are just starting this journey, this is a better thickness for you than something that is ultra fine, like what I'm going to use, which is really, really tiny. Okay, because as you round with a thinner tip, you have a higher propensity for creating lips and creating sharp edges in your work that you don't necessarily want, okay? So, when everybody is ready, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our spiral, okay? So we're going to start from the center of our page, okay? And we're going to create a spiral that moves outward. And like I said, we want to end on the higher end. Hi, Pervin, how are you, darling? We want to end on the higher end of our paper. Okay? So, whenever you're ready with your thickest marker, or if you have the same size marker, you can go over it a couple of times. Okay, I'm still going to neurograph this line, and as we're drawing this spiral, we are not just drawing a straight line, we're trying to neurograph this along the line as much as possible. Okay, so from the center, We're going to create a neurographic line going up. And I want to do this a couple of times. Okay. And you have your main spiral. Again, remember that perfection is not the goal here. In neurographic art, it never is. It is about the process, not the perfection. So it doesn't look, matter if your spiral doesn't look perfect and it looks lopsided. Okay, let's not get lost in perfectionism. Let's just focus on putting the intention out there. Now, the next thing I want us to do is to divide our work into eight equal segments. Okay, now the way I'm going to do that is by drawing the, um, dividing this page into quarters and then drawing the diagonals. Okay, I don't necessarily want to draw these lines too dark because even though I want to be able to see where these pies are, when the work is finished, I don't necessarily want to be able to notice it. Okay, so I'm going to start from the center and I'm going to give myself a dotted outline of where the horizon line is and then I'll draw the center vertical okay it's there but it's faint okay now when I go to draw the diagonal I don't have a square paper so instead of going from the corner to corner I'm actually going to come, because that's not going to give me the right diagonal for the circle I have. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the center and divide this as equally as I can. Okay. Once we have all of that, the next thing we want to do is 
figure out what each of these pies is all about. Okay, so remember I told you I will tell you what seven of these um, stand for, and you are going to do, you are going to choose the eighth. Okay, so the first pie I want you to locate for yourself and mark is your health pie. Okay, intrinsically looking at what you have, which one of these looks like your health pie to you? And I'm going to write it faintly in, in that pie, to identify the pie. Okay. The next one, let's go with the one that rhymes, and let's go with wealth. Okay. Out of these pies, which one is your wealth pie? Next, let's identify your love pie. Everybody with me? Next, I want you to identify your community pie. Next is going to be your creativity pie. Let, let's do spirituality next. The last one that I'm going to determine for you is your vocation or your career. And the last pie is your personal project. Now, I want you to, in some ways now, completely ignore the spiral. 
because what we're going to do is we're going to mentally and visually divide these pies, each of these pies, into three segments. Okay? Each pie is going to be made up of a present, next year, and long-term future. And as we start to draw things in here, I don't want you to feel completely confined to where you drew that spiral. You can, but in some sections you might have a much smaller present right, than other sections. So I want you to kind of visually ignore that and make your pieces almost the same. So give yourself the same amount for your present, the same amount for the near future, so the next 12 months, and then overall big dream and goal. Okay? So, if you guys are with me and you're doing this, we can do this two ways. Either I can pick where we go and as we jump around because we're not going to do these in any specific order either i can choose what we do first and last and next and second or if you guys are here and you're doing it with me you guys can choose so if you guys want to choose if anyone wants to choose if there's a pie that they're really really curious to get into or is, are jonesing to go at i'm going to give everybody like 30 seconds and just put down the pie you want to get into. And if I get no responses, I will start picking pies for us to do. Okay? So, if you want to pick a pie, your time is now. And don't be shy, there are no wrong answers here. No takers? Okay. If that's the case, then I will suggest that we start with our health pie. And in the first section, as we start this pie, I want you to think about everything that you are grateful for the body you have right now, for the capabilities that you have right now. I don't care if you think you have a few extra pounds or you want to get in shape or there are medical concerns that you're dealing with at the moment, physical or mental, doesn't matter. But in your overall health, what are the things that you are grateful for? And for each of those things, I want you to draw a circle in the first third, in your present moment for that pie. So this is my health pie, so I'm going to draw three to five circles here, okay? <laughs> you're more than welcome, Donna, and Happy New Moon. I'm glad that you're here. And this time with your own account, not your husband's. <laughs> so I recognize you for you. Okay, so I'll make the first one easy. I think we can all appreciate this. I am grateful for an able body. Right? I am grateful that I have a body that gets out of bed every morning, moves me around, is the temple for this crazy mind of mine, and from time to time allows me to do exciting things like go diving. Okay, so that's going to be my first circle. Now, one of the things you can do is have a piece of paper next to you, and for every um, pie, you can actually write the name of the pie at the top, so health, and then write down what these circles are, one, two, three, four, five. Just one word next to each of them, or two words, or however many it takes for you to describe. We're not essay writing, this is not journaling right now, but if you want to have an accompaniment to your neurographic vision board, where you can go back and look at, oh, what was that circle about, you can actually write them down. Even if you don't record them, either on the circle itself or on a separate piece of paper, it won't matter because your subconscious will remember what it needs to. Even if you consciously come back and can't say what these circles were all about, your subconscious will know what it is putting out into the universe. Okay? But if you want to have that, then by all means, 
have a separate piece of paper and write down what each of these circles in now, future, and long term represent. Okay? So the second thing that I'm grateful for in my health journey is that I have a semi-regular yoga and meditation practice. So I'm going to draw a circle for yoga. I'm going to draw another one for meditation. Okay. And then I have a relatively healthy diet. I will indulge in fast food from time to time, but rarely, <laughs> okay? And this is good for me, this is specifically for me because I've had issues with digestion before. I've had issues with food allergies and all that stuff, so actually being able to have a balanced diet that is not going to put my life in danger um, is actually a huge bonus for me even though I still read food labels like my life depends on it. Okay. The last thing I'm gonna put in my health pie is the little bit of medical knowledge that I have from studying different things, including Chinese medicine that allows me to be an advocate for my own health, to recognize signs of imbalance and what is healthy and what is not, and when necessary to speak to professionals in a language they understand and therefore being able to be a good advocate for whatever my health needs are. Okay. So, once you have your present, your three to five bubbles in your present. Again, they can overlap, they don't have to. You can put them way separate away from each other. You can only have three. You can, If you choose, you can have more than five. It's up to you, okay? This is not a limited practice in any way. Whatever you're being called to do, by all means, do it, okay? So, once we have our present done, we're going to move into the second two-thirds, and now our circles are going to get a little bit bigger. And we're going to leave yourself enough room for your biggest circle in the end. Okay, so be forewarned. So now we're going to draw, again, three to five circles for what it is that you want to manifest in the coming year when it comes to your health okay so for example one of mine is i would like to turn my semi regular yoga practice into a fully regular yoga practice and finish my yoga teacher training The other thing that I want to do in regards to my health is I have a Ayurveda course that I would like to finish and start incorporating that into my daily life as well. Okay. I want to start sharing a little bit about my meditation practice. And I've been going through some really big changes in my life, which has left some emotional imprints. So I have a little bit of unlearning and loving myself and shadow work to do, okay? So that's also part of health. Your mental health is part of your overall health. So that's my other goal, to continue my emotional healing journey that will then be preventative for my physical health because whatever you feel emotionally will eventually manifest physically now with this last one i don't want just my effort i would like support from the universe 
And so I'm going to draw my first support spiral. Okay, so I'm actually going to draw a spiral starting from the top end of the circle, coming into the circle. Because I want to focus the energy from the universe, this healing energy, this enlightenment energy, this insightful energy into me. I want to focus inward. So I'm drawing it from the outside of the circle into the circle. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go for like regular checkups just to make sure nothing is happening. I'm at the age where preventative screening is a thing. <laughs> and so I would like that to happen with ease and grace in the next year as we move forward. So that's my five for my year health bubble. Now, you can have other goals like you want to lose weight, you want to join a fitness competition, you want to change your diet, you, yours can be anything that speaks to you. I'm just giving you examples of mine so that you get an example, you get an idea of the kinds of things you have to put there. Okay. One suggestion that I will make is when it comes to your health bubble, let it not be about appearances and let it not be a superficial goal okay so for me for example it is much more important for my body to be healthy than for me to be a certain dress size or a certain number on a scale this is an internal journey this is not something where we're looking at external matrix or external matrices in order for us to love ourselves and accept ourselves the way we are. It is important to be healthy. Your body is the temple for your soul, for your higher self, okay? But bodies go through changes and we should be able to love ourselves through all of that. So let's make our health goals health oriented and not so much appearance oriented, if I may be so bold as to suggest, that. okay? Now, the next big chunk that's left is the big impossible dream when it comes to your health. So for me, I have two main goals and dreams when it comes to my health. Number one is that cancer runs in my family. And what I would like to do is die cancer free. So my first bubble is that. My first dream is to die of some other natural cause other than cancer in my sleep without suffering. Might sound a little morbid, but it's actually a big dream. The second one that I have is I would like to age like Jane Fonda. <laughs> I would like to be 80 something years old and still completely mobile and with a zest for life and okay. so that's my second big circle. Again here you can have three to five but since these are the big dreams I don't really suggest going more than three. If we chase too many rabbits we end up catching them. So be very clear about your two, three main, one or two or three main impossible dreams that you have. And then once you have that, we are done with this pie and we're going to move on to the next one. Does anybody want to pick the next pie or should I just move on to whatever I want?
And if I'm going too fast for anybody, please let me know. I've done this composition a few times, so I'm used to coming up with these lists. So if anybody needs more time to finish a pie, just let me know. Later on, people can pause me. Right now, you guys don't have that option. So if you're doing this along with me and I'm going too fast, just let me know. Donna wants to go to wealth. Let's go to wealth. Okay. So when it comes to your wealth, what is it that you have right now that you are grateful for? Okay? And your wealth includes all of your possessions, whether they're liquid or not. So it includes things like your home. Yeah, there we go. Roxanne also wanted wealth. Everybody's manifesting wealth right now. It's fine. Let's, let's do that next. <laughs> this is great. Okay. So your wealth isn't just the number in your bank account. Okay. Your wealth is also your home. Your wealth is also any kind of education and skills that you have. Your wealth is also your connections, your social network that you have. It is not just a monetary value. As we do the wealth, I want you to remember one thing about money because a lot of the time we equate wealth with money and money by itself does not have power. Okay, money as a object does not have power on its own. Okay, so money is the universal unit of barter. You give money to receive something else. So the power of money is in the exchange. If you have 300 gazillion dollars sitting in a bank account and you don't purchase anything with it, that money has no power. So the power of money is in its flow. And so like everything else that, has, that only is useful and only has power when it is in flow, like electricity, like water, if you decide to hoard that power that is supposed to be in flow, what happens is you rot that thing. You l remove its potential. So think of money as like a battery. It has the potential to release energy. So when it comes to manifesting wealth, it's not that we want to hoard this energy and sit on top of it. What we actually want to do is create a flow. Right? Look at the way the world of business works. If you want a very successful business, if you want to accumulate wealth, find a problem in the world provide a solution and in that exchange of energy you will have an ocean of of this potential energy this money coming to you so the greater the flow away from you is the more the universe is going to give you to have so you don't want to have a little stream you want to create an ocean that you're sitting next to so that that potential energy comes into your life sustains everything that you want and have and then there is more for everyone else. It's flowing away from you. You want to create that flow. So don't just attach wealth to a number in a bank account. Recognize all the other sources of energy exchange that you have, like your skills, like your education, like your history, like your interpersonal skills. These are all part of your wealth. The home that you live in, the security that you have, this is all part of your wealth. So that was a very long soliloquy, I apologize. But with that in mind, let's now put our circles in for what it is that we have and we are grateful for. So I'm going to be silent for a few minutes and let you process that on your own. And if you want, again, use your page next to you to write down what these things are that you're grateful for.
Your family is another part of your wealth. Your loved ones are part of your wealth. Your wealth is not just money. Okay, now let's go to the next part. When it comes to your wealth, what is it that you want to manifest physically in the upcoming year? Okay, again, this can be education. You may want to get educated in something new and get a certification or a degree. It might be a certain number in the bank account by the end of the year, by December 31st, or by March 1st next year, or the spring equinox next year. It's up to you. Okay, I go by Persian New Year, which is the spring equinox anyway, so most of my manifestation goals are usually from New Year, Persian New Year to Persian, so spring equinox to spring equinox. Okay. There you go. Love that. Family is definitely a huge wealth. Okay. So now we draw in the three to five circles that you want for what it is that you want to manifest. And again, if with any of these things, you want to bring in divine intervention or universal power or universal consciousness or God energy, whatever you want to call it, you are free to bring in a support spiral or a focus spiral. And then we're going to draw the one to three big circles about that big impossible dream. Again, it doesn't have to necessarily be a dollar amount. My big impossible dream is to one day have a working lavender farm, for example. And it's not just to have a farm, but I would like to have living quarters on said farm in which I provide healing to people who are coming out of emotionally abusive relationships. Because although emotional abuse is not uh, physically seen, it creates a lot of scars in people at that, that requires intervention, requires healing requires a different environment for you to be in to be able to reconnect with nature with yourself with pure love with acceptance with all of that with responsibility all of those things so my big wealth dream isn't actually about a dollar amount it's actually having enough potential energy to bring this dream about so my in my wealth bubble I'm only going to have one big soup.
who wants to pick the next wedge. We have love, your vocation, your career, your business, spirituality, community, creativity, and personal project. Does anyone want to pick where to go next? Your spiritual practices can be traditional or non-traditional. It can be religiously based or not. That is completely up to you. But when it comes to your spiritual practices, your connectedness to source, God, whatever it is that you believe in, what are some of the practices and some of the things you have right now that you are grateful for? Okay. As an example for me, it's my meditation practice, it's my own set of personal beliefs, it's my ceremonies that I do for different occasions, and all of that. Okay, so what are some of the things that you have in terms of a spiritual practice that you are grateful for? Okay, so for me, things like astrology and tarot and this art are a huge part of my spiritual practice okay so take a few minutes and let's draw in our three to five circles in what it is that we already have that we are grateful for So this is interesting. My little meditation bubble right now came across from my spiritual spirituality bubble into my health bubble. So that practice is both a spiritual practice for me and a health practice for me. Another thing I want you to notice at some point <clears throat> is what wedges did you put next to what? What wedges are sandwiched between each other so they're being influenced by each other and what wedges are opposed to each other is there opposition between the ones that you've put across or is it the case of duality where they attract and support one another this is an observation only you can make your subconscious placed everything where it did because those interconnections are there in the background. So notice what is where. And if you go into other bubbles, start to notice what are the bubbles that belong in more than one section. Now, once we are done our what we're grateful for now, we go into what are we manifesting in the upcoming year. As an example, one of the things that I'm going to be focusing on a lot more is my connection to my divine feminine and healing feminine wounds given 
my personal history, where I come from, the part of the world I come from, the way I was raised by my mother, all of those things. I still have a lot of healing to do when it comes to accepting my feminine. I've been in my masculine for way too long. I'm way too comfortable in that. And so to fall into my feminine, to fall into receptivity, to fall into surrender, to fall into softness is actually a challenge for me. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing is trying to reconnect to this idea of goddesses, of deities, of the different models of femininity that are not necessarily always soft and pleasant and acquiescent and submissive and those things that have now come to engender femininity in, in our gender identities. Again, masculinity and femininity has nothing to do with gender. We all have a masculine side and a feminine side regardless of what our physical gender or our identified gender is. Okay? But the way that I was raised, I have a lot of wounds around my femininity, around even things like my sexuality and my sexual expression and um, all of that, my identity with my own body, the way that I view myself, the way that I'm critical about my appearance, my body, all of those things. So part of my spiritual practice is going to be coming home to myself and allowing for myself to be more in my feminine. I think there are a lot of us as women who really, really need this practice. And so that's going to be part of what I want to manifest in the upcoming year. And this one I want universal consciousness energy to come into <laughs> surrender does not come easily to me okay <laughs> i admit it i am a stubborn little mule and so i'm going to need divine intervention to, to surrender <laughs> she says in gritted teeth okay another part of my spiritual practice is actually going to be my yoga certification And that's interesting because it just came into my vocation bubble as well. So this is just, isn't going to be just a spiritual practice for me. It's also going to be my calling, my career in life. It's what I like to do. I like to teach people how to live in balance. Find it and then try to share what I have learned with others. Another part of my spiritual practice in the upcoming year is going to be developing more compositions for neurographic art and actually doing more of my own art on my own time and continuing to express my emotions as I feel them in a nonverbal way. And then share it with all of you lovely people who are kind enough to accompany me on this journey. And then we arrive at the big impossible dream when it comes to spirituality. And for me, my big impossible spirituality dream <laughs> is to get to the point where I am so comfortable being uncomfortable that I no longer get triggered. It's going to be very difficult. It's almost impossible. Right? But that's my impossible dream, to be able to be so comfortable in the world of duality and non-judgment and with who I am, that no matter what happens, I don't get triggered. I can always stay in the space of responsiveness rather than reaction. I don't want to react, I don't want to have a gut reaction, an automatic reaction to anything. I would like to have the ability to absorb what's happening and then respond accordingly and respond responsibly. 
because I believe that way I will minimize the damage that I will do to other people in this world. <laughs> okay? So, whatever your big spiritual dream is, We're going to give it the biggest circle. And then once that's done, we can move on. Anyone want to pick the next pie? Absolutely. Okay. Let's go to the love bubble. Who do you love in your life right now? This is probably the one bubble where most people can put more than five, right? Your, your family members, your friends, your significant other if you have one, um, your community, your church group, your spiritual group, your there are a lot of different things that you can have. There are a lot of different sources of love that we have. Love isn't just our romantic partner. Okay, now, what I want you to do is because, and I will, I, I'm going to suggest this because most people don't do this. If not your very first circle, at least one of the circles that you have put in right now is your love for you. Your self-love is going to determine how you experience love in your life. So if it's not the very first circle which you put down, which for most of us it's not going to be, at least one of the five circles you're putting down is the love you have for yourself. Because in this life, we cannot receive what we don't have. So if we don't love ourselves enough, if we don't love ourselves first, we will continue to be put in relationships that will leave us feeling abandoned. And the reason for that is because we are abandoning ourselves first. We are the first to abandon ourselves. So self-love is incredibly important. And so if it's not your very first circle, it better be one of the five circles you put down if you're calling in love into your life in any way moving forward. Good? Let's do the love ball. also like to include my dog in this so if you have any pets they are a source of unconditional love so definitely give them a circle as well and look at that my puppy love <laughs> fell in love and wealth at the same time she is definitely my wealth she is my fur baby 
she makes me feel very wealthy. And once we are done with that, with the, the people that we have already and we love, let's talk about what is the love that you want to call in in the next year. Do you want to start a new relationship? Do you want to make the one you're in better and resolve conflict? Do, are there family relationships or work relationships that are strained at the moment and you want to make them better? What is it that you are calling in? Is there something about your love in the past that you need to heal from and emotionally return back to yourself. So what are the things that you're calling into your life? And then last but not least, when it comes to love, what is the big impossible dream? I only have one, and that is to have my own family. So it may not sound impossible for most people, but <laughs> given my circumstances and where I am in my life right now that seems like the very big impossible dream And for this one, I'm also going to bring in my focus bird. Mercury is definitely in let retrograde because I'm having all kinds of issues with technology and I'm hoping my computer won't kick me out halfway in the middle of this live. But if it does, at this point, you've we've gone through half of them, so you'll know how to finish the rest. The only thing that will remain is coloring instructions, which we'll get to hopefully soon if this thing doesn't shut down on me. If it does shut, shut down on me, I apologize in advance. Okay. <laughs> Halfway there, just <laughs> let me finish the session. Okay, once we are done with love, where are we going next?
let's see if Roxanne and Donna will uh, agree with each other one more time. Yeah, of course. I I have a couple that are running out of the page too. Absolutely, why not? The bigger the better. Even if you have like a tiny bit of it inside, your brain will complete that circle every time it sees a portion of it. So it is absolutely okay if your bubble does not fit on the page. Absolutely. Okay. Let's go to creativity next. Now, when I say the word creativity, most of you will think of things like art. Like how creative are you? Like how, how much do you express yourself through creative means? Oh no, I do this all the time. I've chosen pies all over the place and I like the randomness of letting you guys choose and this is my way of being in surrender and not taking control so no i will definitely surrender control of where we're going next to you lot <laughs> happily i will surrender that <laughs> okay so this is not my first rodeo i can't even tell you how many of these manifestation wheels i have so <laughs> okay let's go to creativity next now your creativity is absolute part of your creativity is absolutely what you're doing with me right now okay expressing yourself in non-conventional ways your fashion sense your definitely these kinds of things are creativity but you know what else is creativity things that you make from scratch things that you bring into this world that weren't there before I'm so happy you're enjoying it, Don. Okay? So, whether that's processes, whether that's solving a problem, whether that's whatever it may be, it, creativity is actually a lot more practical than we think it is. Yeah, you guys are definitely synced up, which is lovely. <laughs> You guys are pulling from the same general consciousness, and that's lovely to see. Yeah, absolutely. You are co-creating with the universe every time you put out a dream, or every time you worry. You are constantly being in a creative mode. The universe requires your creativity in order to create the next thing to come into our life. Most of the things we are using right now were an impossible dream 50 years ago or 100 years ago. This YouTube session right now that we are using so matter-of-factly was not possible 25 years, 30 years ago. Okay? so. In order for the universe, the universe is always expanding. It is always creating new things. But in order to do that, it needs you to dream it first. So every time you daydream, you are co-creating with the universe. Every time you worry, you are co-creating with the universe. In fact, daydreaming and worrying are the exact same thing when it comes to the universe. It does not recognize positive or negative or good or bad as we put it. It just focuses on what are you asking for? What are you putting your energy on? And I will give you exactly that. It does not recognize a negative. There you go. So when it comes to your sense of creativity what are some of the things you have right now that you are grateful for i definitely have this art and i'm also a really good problem solver i can see out of the box 
and I can come up with innovative ways of doing things that other people have done before, of doing things that have never been done before. So those kinds of things. What are your creative senses? What are your creative practices that you are grateful for right now? Once you have that, let's move on to what are you going to create in the next year. So for example, I'm definitely going to create more compositions to share with you guys and live classes and go at your own pace courses, all of those things. Definitely going to create that. I would li also like to write a book. I have a lot to say and I'm long-winded in case you haven't figured that out by now. And writing has been, my pen and paper have been my best friend since I was seven, eight years old. So for decades now, writing has been my go-to. And so I would like to write a book about the life that I've lived. Once you have that, once you have your three to five bubbles of what you are creating in the upcoming year, you know, it could be a brand new wardrobe, it could be a collection of recipes, it could be whatever brings you joy, whatever it is that you're creating that isn't there before. once we have that we're going to go to the one to three big impossible creativity dreams for me that's to be a cross between a female tony robbins and deepak chopra i like to be able to motivate people like tony robbins does even though he's very much in the masculine i would like to do it in the feminine way 
And I also have a lot of respect for how many books Deepak Chopra has written and how much knowledge he has. So I would like to cross the two of them together. So. Okay, once you have that, there are three pies left, vocation, personal project, and community, or career, business, whatever you want to call vocation. Where shall we go next, ladies? Let's have you sync up again. <laughs> Let's see if we can have like the perfect round. There's only two more that you have to choose the same, because then... The last one is the last one standing. So, where shall we go next? Ah, Roxanne, thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. I feel like I have a long way to go to get there, <laughs> both in terms of learning and in terms of visibility, but thank you. That, that is very heartwarming. If you're picking up on my intention, then that means I'm in the process of becoming, and I'm happy with that. Okay, let's go to vocation next. <laughs> okay, guys, you have one more and it's a 50-50 chance. If you both say the same thing, you've had the perfect day. You've had the perfect round. And you two should connect with each other because you are very well connected spiritually somehow. <laughs> okay, let's go to vocation next in terms of your career what is it that you have you already have that you're grateful for again this can be education this can be work experience this can be connections in a specific industry it can be whatever okay what do you have in terms of your career that you are grateful for now <laughs> you guys even have the exact same sentiment at the same time. I am really glad that you're enjoying this process. <laughs> That's lovely. Okay. When it comes to your vocation, your calling in life, your career, your whatever it may be, what is it that you want to see, you want to manifest in the next year? So I've already manifested some of what I want, which is you lovely lot. 
I would just like for this thing to expand and grow and become bigger and help as many people as possible because I think it really can. So all of my bubbles in terms of creation is going to be expansion of what I have already managed to create. Yours could be something completely new, right? You can have, you can want a change in career or you can want to come out of a career and go into a vocation. It doesn't have to be related to what you already have. You can ask for something absolutely brand new, okay? You're not limited in this in any way. Remember that our sheet here is the pleroma. It is the field of all probabilities and possibilities. Everything and anything is possible on this manifestation wheel. So don't limit yourself to what you have or what you think is practical. Well, for the next year, for what's practical, but especially for your big dream, go for that big impossible dream. Okay? Like the baby of Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra. <laughs> and maybe a little bit of Oprah thrown in there as well. <laughs> doesn't hurt And once you have all of those bubbles, we come to the big impossible dream. My big dream in my vocation is to be an effective healer. <laughs> I would like to be able to help as many people heal themselves as possible because when it comes to healing, whether physical or emotional or mental, you are the only one who heals yourself. Even with Western medical in intervention, it is your body that heals itself. But when it comes to the mind and the heart, there is no medical intervention. There is no doctor outside of you. There is no anesthetic. There is nobody that can actually do the work of healing for you. You have to do it for yourself. I would just like to be the person that shows you the way so you can go on this journey on your own. And for as many of us to be able to return home to ourselves as possible. That's my big impossible vocation dream, to heal a billion people. So we stop living in societies like the ones we have created right now. And I will not go into all of the things that I think are wrong with our society. Let's just say, I think we all need a lot of healing. <laughs> and look at that. It took half of my love bubble as well and it intertwined with my little family bubble unit <laughs> and this is also one of those circles that i want a focus spiral in this is a really big important dream for me Okay, here we go. Two left. Are we doing personal project or are we doing community? Donna and uh, 
Roxanne. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Yeah, the world seems a little topsy-turvy right now. We seem to have taken this separation nonsense a little too seriously. We forget we're all one humanity and there's only one of us and one earth and we're one home and one giant family. And if there's anyone hurting anywhere in the world, it means we're all hurting. And I would like for more of us to remember that. The separation is superficial. The reality is we're all interconnected. Community it is. You really don't want to do your personal project, Rexan, do you? <laughs> Talk about procrastinating on a personal project. <laughs> She's like, I'm leaving that one for last, okay? <laughs> I'll do everything else before I get to this one. <laughs> I'm only joking. Okay, when it comes to your community, what is it that you already have that you're grateful for? So, the community near you, your circle of friends, your colleagues, your coworkers, all of that. For me, you guys are part of my community. I am eternally grateful for you guys. So believe it or not, y'all are going to be a bubble on my community one. Save the best for last. Okay, I, I like the way you changed that perspective. I appreciate the shift. <laughs> okay, so shall we do the community bubble? What are the pieces of community that you have if you belong to a spiritual community if you belong to a church or a synagogue or a temple if you belong to um, I don't know a bridge club or a puzzling club or whatever it may be these are parts of your community which you already have so let's acknowledge them first and let's put them in with gratitude and then we'll move on to what we want to create next Of course you did. You two find a way to private message each other because I think this is the start of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> if I may quote Casablanca. Once we have that, let's start thinking about what it is in terms of <laughs> I love that. Oh, there you go. We're not that far apart. I'm in Ontario, Canada, so we're all North American local right now. <laughs> So, in the upcoming year, 
What is it that you want to see in your community? What do you want to create? Do you want to join a new social club? Do you want to leave a social club? Do you want to start a social club? Do you want to expand your friend circle? What are some of the things that you're creating in terms of your community? So as an example, part of what I want to create for my community is a female-oriented retreat where we all go for a week and reconnect to ourselves and do more of this kind of art together and have sound baths together and share sessions together and we have a community of women who relearn how to reconnect to themselves and to the feminine in all of us. This is one of those ancient practices out of ancient Egypt that we have lost, right? And as a process of hyper-masculinization of our society, we have lost sisterhood. We have lost that feminine touch with each other. Right? So I would like to create the community that brings that back. Yeah, that would be cu I would be curious to know if you have the same personal project too. And then once you have that, we're going to go to the last step, which is our big personal dream. For me, that is to be part of and help create this community of healers. And doesn't that circle just decide to become a cosmic egg of its own? Okay, Donna, I will keep that in mind. Okay, an hour and a half into our session and we have arrived at the last piece of the pie. When it comes to your personal project, do you guys want to write down what your personal project is?
my personal project is putting together this retreat we were just talking about. So now you know mine. <laughs> So, when it comes to your personal project, what are some of the resources, some of the things you already have? Donna, you're kind of like me. I don't tell people what my intentions are until they have come to fruition. So it's one of those things I learned from Cinderella. If you tell your dreams, they won't come true. So <laughs> a Disney princess at heart, okay? And I'm sharing all of these things with you now because I want to give you guys an idea of how to do this, but usually I don't let anybody know what this is and this is one of the reasons why I love this kind of vision board because when you do the traditional kind of vision board anybody who looks at your images can have a pretty good guess at what it is that you are looking to manifest into your life but when it comes to um, this kind of work only you can tell what the intention was and it's just as powerful as the one with the photos so when I do this for myself I don't write anything down I don't want anybody to know and then I take it and I put it over my bed so that every time every morning when I wake up my subconscious remembers what my intentions were without anybody else being able to do it so uh, anybody else being able to influence with their energy what it is that I'm putting out because other people may be very well intentioned but nevertheless bring negative energy or heavy energy into my intentions and I don't want them. So I completely understand you wanting to keep that private. Once we have our three to five bubbles for what it is that we have, we move into what are the things that we are going to manifest in the upcoming year.
<laughs> it is neurographic indeed. <laughs> And then once you have your three to five things that you're going to manifest in the upcoming year, let's talk about the big impossible dream. If you were to take your personal project beyond the limits of your imagination, what would it look like? So what is the big impossible dream? For me, it is to have this retreat of mine become the go-to healing journey for women worldwide. I want billions of people to go through the same kind of practice of homecoming to themselves. So that is my big impossible. Now, once you've done that, if you've done it like me and you've neurographed all of your bubbles or if you have interlapping bubbles, one of the things you can do is spend some time rounding everything in. All of these little intersections and everything, you can round them in. Okay? It is not a must. It is not a absolute have to with this composition because we have a lot of intersections and if you have neurographed them, most of them are already not all that sharp. Okay, and your mind recognizes that you've done neurographic lines around them, so you don't have to. But with your main spiral, I do want you to go in and make sure that we round all of these intersections within the spiral itself. So we want this to be nice and smooth. And if you've used a really big chisel tipped pen, it's actually very, very quick to round all of this off. Sometimes it's just a matter of putting a dot at the end of where these connections meet so that it's not a sharp edge. If you want to go in and, and round all of these details, you can, okay? If I start doing this, I will be here about an hour and a half just doing rounding and I don't want to keep you all. So for the sake of time and for the sake of not being a perfectionist, I'm actually going to leave it as it is. But if you feel like you want to round it all, feel free to do it. You do not have to rush along with me. You can actually spend the time to sit and round all of the intersections that you see or at least the ones that are glaring at you and they're very very obvious and bother you that are because they have sharp edges So I definitely don't want any sharp edges in my spiral because this is what I'm using to communicate my energy to the Divine Mother, to the universe, and I definitely want to do that with ease and grace and a lot of respect, right? Because I don't want to dictate terms to the universe. I'm just humbly suggesting this is what I would like to do. And for that, with that, I would like to have as much ease and grace as possible in this process. And that shouldn't take very long to round your spiral. Okay. The last thing we want to do is to 
in order to bring this composition to life is we want to introduce frequency and we use we do that using color give me one second i forgot to bring my pencils before the session okay so there are a couple of different ways to actually color this composition you can decide to go in and color individual bubbles by themselves in their own color um, that's totally fine the way that i like to do this usually is using all the seven chakra colors or the colors of the rainbow um, and because to me that brings in all the energies you want for creation from the root chakra from i am to i understand it brings all of the energies together and if you put all of these parts of light put back together you get white light which is divinity which is you know everything that is conceived the first thing that is conceived in the darkness of the void is light and so by using its component parts i get to bring in light into my composition but again you can choose this is completely intuitive now the only thing that matters is that at the end of this session when you look at your work it is pleasing to your eye nothing else matters now if you want to do the rainbow colors like i'm going to do you have two options you can start either with the red in the center and purple in the in in the extremities or or around your paper or you can do it the other way you can start with the purple in the center and have red and uh, at the edges i like to start with the red in the center because the first three chakras are are physical chakras and so i want to concentrate the physical into the part of me that is that has already happened and is my gratitude and the part going into the part of me that is planning into next year when it comes to the grand dreams and all of that i would like to have more of the divine energy than my physical energy so for that reason i'm going to start with red in the center and i'm just going to expand these circles and come out you can do it the opposite way or you can ju just choose whatever color for whatever section you want good everybody clear on instructions on coloring this part is going to be real quick now. Okay. If you have any questions, put them in the chat and I'm more than happy to answer them. if that was a little loud.
Do we know the order of the colors for the rainbow or chakras? They're the same colors in the same order or do we want me to go over them very quickly? So one of the rules when it, we do neurographic art in terms of coloring is we always want to color two or more sections with the same color and when we do that we want to ignore the boundaries between them. And that if you color it the way that I'm doing that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing more two or more sections with the same color and we're ignoring any of the boundaries between the bubbles we have created or the bubbles between or the boundaries between our pies because energy and frequency actually doesn't respect physical boundaries it moves through them so we want to have the same kind of visual for our subconscious mind so that it knows that no matter what energy permeates through matter and so the limits that we see the limitations that we see are just our limitations and they are not they don't belong to the universe they don't belong to divine energy we are the limited ones in our understanding and so on oh sure for others who will see this so the colors in order from root chakra to crown is red orange yellow green light blue indigo or dark purple and then light purple thank you donna thank you for that suggestion i appreciate it can you tell i really like this blue <laughs> So in other neurographic compositions, I will tell you to leave about 30% of the page white and not to color the whole thing. Because part of what we don't want to do is use neurographic art as a control practice where we dictate terms to the universe in terms of what it is that we want to see manifest in our lives. When it comes to this one, it's the only one that I don't mind you coloring the whole page. 
because again we're breaking light into its constituent colors and when you put them all together it gives you white which is divine light which is all kinds of possibilities and probabilities <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying this process, Donna. I really am. No, you can always go back. So here's the thing. Once you start the process of rounding, you can't stop. But if you want to color first and go back and round later, you absolutely can. Once you start rounding though, you have to sit until the rounding is finished. Because if we don't do that, we program procrastination into our subconscious. And I don't want to give you any bad habits. So you can absolutely color all of this in now and then go back with your other pen and round everything in. You don't have to rush at all. With neurographic art, what matters is that you do what you're called to do, not what you're told to do. This is your realm of all probabilities and possibilities. And so whatever you're called to do, especially when it comes to coloring, that's exactly what you should do. And to be honest, the reason I didn't round everything in my circles is because I don't want to get you guys sitting here for another three hours. So if I were to do this on my own, I would definitely round all of the intersections I've created. 
But this is also good for me because this gets me to break my patterns, which is what neurographic art is supposed to do to begin with. So if I always round them, it's good for me not to round them once in a while. Because it also creates a pattern interrupt for me. Once you've colored, once you have all your colors in, or once you have colored it to your satisfaction, if you've decided to color every bubble by itself, you are all done with setting your intentions with the new moon in Aries and with this quarter's manifestation wheel or your vision board, whichever one you want to call it. So my suggestion to you is if you've done this in a notebook like I have, take it out of the notebook and put it somewhere where you can see it on a daily basis. And if it's on a loose piece of paper, even better, because you don't have to remove it. But you want to put it somewhere that is visible to you. Put it over your desk at work. Put it over your bed. Put it on your nightstand or on your mirror. Uh, in the morning so that when you are getting yourself ready the energy of all of these intentions you just set can keep radiating at you and reminds your subconscious what it is that you are looking to manifest the more this becomes top of mind both in your subconscious mind and in your conscious mind the more likely you are to achieve the dreams that you have set for yourself And with that, that is all I have for you today. <laughs> I hope you guys have a fabulous new moon and work with the energies of this new moon in the best way that suits you. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're watching the replay and you have any questions, you know where to reach me. My email is there. You can leave comments um, under the replay for this video and I will do my best to respond to them as soon as possible. If you are going to do this practice and you didn't do it with me live, the best time to work with the energies of a new moon is within the first 72 hours. Because after that we start to get more and more light on the moon and we want to do this in the darkest parts of the new of the moon because conception always happens in the dark remember that even a new day begins in the darkest part of the night right it, it's it happens at midnight by the time you see daylight a whole quarter or a third of the day is already gone so 
beginnings always happen in the darkness. Conception always happens in the dark. So we want to set new intentions when the moon has the least amount of light. I am so glad you enjoyed this. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Roxanne, for making this so much fun for me and also a surrender practice at the same time because I got to not be in control. And I truly appreciate you and I appreciate this opportunity to both lead and be led at the same time. So thank you so much, everybody. I wish you a beautiful weekend. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Oh, one last thing. Please hydrate well after neurographic art sessions. It may seem like all fun and games, but you're doing a lot of neurological work and your brain requires a lot of water. So make sure that you are hydrating well. And if you do end up having vivid dreams within the first 48 hours after a session, please don't get concerned. This is very normal. And that's it. With that, I'm going to release you, let you enjoy the rest of your week. And I will see you next week with another composition. If you are on the mailing list, you will get the intention for next week and all of that in the emails. If you want to receive those emails, just head over to my website, maryamini.com, subscribe to the email list, and you will get all the details about the YouTube sessions and also the in-person journeys that are coming up. The next journey coming up is going to be Journey to Understanding, which is a seven-week journey that covers the chakras one by one, okay? So I'm going to have live sessions uh, on YouTube about each chakra, but the, ex the personal exploration of each chakra is going to happen in person and it's going to happen on Zoom. So if you want to join that journey, it starts on May the 4th, so you have some time to catch up. Just let me know or head over to the website and um, you can sign up there. If you choose to sign up early for Journey to Understanding, there is a code that you can use until the middle of the month uh, to actually save on that course. And the code is J2U, so the letter J, the number two and the letter U, which stands for Journey to Understanding. If you stayed all the way to the end and you did this and you want to join that course, putting that code in will give you a pretty good discount on the course. So that's it. That's all I have for you to, for today. I look forward to seeing you again next week. And in the meantime, if you need anything, you know where to find me. Have a blessed week, everybody. Ciao for now.